Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 8th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Hawaiian Islands to the bottom left, there's the Pacific Northwest to the upper right. You see that cool air aloft moving into the region that brought us our nice mountain snows. But we have another pattern change on the way. Warm, moist, southwest flow in the form of an atmospheric river back into the Pacific Northwest. And then we'll take a look at the mid and extended range forecast. We're also going to take a look at the current La Nina and where that is is headed here over the next few months. Now, if you want a nice affordable home weather station, it makes it much more fun to watch the weather when you have a weather station at your house. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. I'm testing two of these in my house right now. Very fun station, great smartphone app, helps support the channel. Pacific Northwest Weather Watch is on Facebook. So click on the link down below to help share with your friends and family. Uh, here we go. National Weather Service, Seattle. Winter storm warnings. We're kind of wrapping this up as we go through the day today. It should expire about 4 p.m. High surf advisories for the Washington, Vancouver Island coastline. I would consider that as well. Down through the Oregon coast and Medford National Weather Service continuing to talk about the large breaking waves as we go through the day today. Still some pretty energetic wave action moving towards our coastal area. So do not turn your back on the ocean if you are headed out. Black ice. Just because your car thermometer says 34, 35 doesn't mean there aren't some frozen patches out there. I saw some clearing. You get that radiational cooling and you can easily cause some areas to drop below freezing and with recent precipitation out there, then yeah, you get that black ice. Causes accidents every year. So do be careful. Now, as far as our current La Nina is concerned, watch what happens as we're going on in through January 13th, 18th, 23rd. You can clearly see we're bringing this westerly surge across the Pacific Ocean. This is likely the demise of La Nina or the beginning of it as we go through the next few months. You can still see across the equatorial Pacific Ocean right there, there's that cooler than normal water. We're still technically in La Nina right now, but look at the European model as it starts to transition as we go through February, March, April. You can really see the transition happening quite rapidly, likely headed towards another moderate El Nino as we go on in towards next summer and the next fall. Yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed La Nina while it lasted, even though it hasn't brought us anything yet here into the lower elevations for the Pacific Northwest yet anyway. Uh, climate forecast system also showing the same thing as we transition back towards uh, an El, uh, El Nino as we go on in through next year, or this upcoming year. So here we are, sea surface temperature anomaly. This is the European forecast. You can see that cooler than normal water. I'll scroll through there. There's that above normal water already showing up here, potentially as early as February and March, and then continuing on as we go through the summer months. So this is the Southern Oscillation Index, kind of showing you that the atmosphere is kind of transitioning back and forth a little bit here. We actually moved into negative territory, which kind of mimics El Nino conditions, and we bounced back a little bit here as well into La Nina conditions. And that's what's known as the Walker Circulation. So so when you are in a, that positive, you're kind of dealing with the deeper convection across the Western Pacific Ocean. But when you get El Nino conditions, that deeper convection is harder to spot. And it moves a bit further out to the West across some of the Central Pacific Ocean. So that's what we're looking at when the Southern Oscillation Index and or what it's trying to tell us anyway. And again, one more look here at the European model, that westerly flow coming across the Pacific Ocean, likely the initial stages of the demise of our current La Nina. So anyway, back to the forecast here. There is our cooler than normal air coming across the region, you know, bringing us our nice mountain snows. You can see that on the infrared satellite imagery again with the Hawaiian Islands to the bottom left. I'll put that into motion and you see that chilly air at 10,000 feet starts to get replaced with some warmer air. And as you can imagine, that's not going to be good for any snow that just recently fell. Another powerful storm up into southeast Alaska where they've just been hammered this year. But down here, we're getting that warm southwest flow atmospheric river activity moving into the Pacific Northwest. And again, this is at 10,000 feet here, folks. And when you're looking at that silver line, that's about where the freezing level is. But watch what happens as we start to squawk into the early portion of next week. We really start to develop this ridge out over the Pacific Northwest and then eventually across the Gulf of Alaska. More on that here in a moment. So there's the temperature anomaly at 850 millibars. You can clearly see we're going above normal as we go through this upcoming weekend. And we're going to stay there for a while. So this atmospheric river really going to do a number on our snow pack for some locations uh, from many locations actually except for maybe some of the highest terrain and then you can really see this warm air aloft just kind of blocking the storm trap for coming into the pacific northwest 
Uh, again, yeah, not very good for some of the higher terrain. I don't like seeing this here, but there it is. And you can see we're not getting much help on the backside of that ridge, at least in some of these model ones. It keeps that a bit too far off to the east to really visit the Pacific Northwest. We'll take a more detailed look at that here in a moment as well. So if we look at snow depth in inches, you know, we're starting to get, we're not back up to normal just yet, but we, we built up a pretty good amount of snow here recently. But watch what happens. You, you see the snowpack shrinking there as we go on into this weekend a little bit. And then it continues to shrink as we go on in through next week. That's because we don't have any more, you know, big batches of cold air rolling down into the Pacific Northwest. I mean, all the way on in through January 22nd, and you're not, and you're seeing just kind of a slow, steady decline in that snowpack. Let me scroll through there and kind of look at it. Let me see if I can toggle there. No, it won't let me but yeah not good lots of warm air aloft incoming here and if we take a look at the european model in fact i'm going to bounce out and we're going to go to six hourly and you can see we're still getting some snowfall here today across some of the mountainous areas some showers still rolling through and as we go through the late morning hours i got to mention that again we're still dealing with some convergent zone activity but of course once you get into the daylight hours it does make some of that harder to get down into the lower elevations and perhaps stick and become uh, more of a detriment to some places mainly north of of Everett across from Snohomish and uh, Skagit County. So let me know what you guys see out there as we go through the day today. Now we scroll off into the future a bit more and you can clearly see this plume of moisture out of the south and west bringing renewed precipitation amounts into Vancouver Island as we go through what is that Friday night. There we go through Saturday morning. Here we go through Saturday late morning. There's Saturday afternoon as that atmospheric river starts to take aim at western Washington as well. Some of the higher terrain will be seeing some snowfall, but this is not, you know, the good lower elevation stuff like what we saw with the last round. And we continue on in through Sunday. I mean, look at this plume just continue continuing to roll in here to western Washington, B.C. High snow levels, especially by the time you get towards the later portion of the weekend. I mean, a lot of warm air aloft, and we continue to bring some precipitation. We might even have to worry about some flooding concerns, depending on just how, you know, how persistent this atmospheric river is and just how much snow we melt across some of the higher terrain. And then after that, I'll show you more on that here in more in a moment. But I want to show you the precipitable water here, percent of normal. So there goes that atmospheric river, and you can see it bouncing around western Washington, B.C., all the way on and through the early portion of next week. Now, 24-hour precipitation total. So we'll scroll through here, and then you see the atmospheric river coming and targeting some of Vancouver Island, the Washington coast. But look at this, 24-hour running total. By Monday morning, an inch and a half and a 24 appeared for Seattle. Uh, pretty good precipitation amounts. Some of southwest BC, I mean, around 2 inches, 2.2 uh, .2 inches in a 24-hour period, and uh, much more potentially across some of the Cascades and some of the Olympic Mountains. Now, you also see this very sharp cutoff here, really not including much of the Willamette Valley, Portland getting a bit more here, but we'll watch to see just how far south that precipitation will trend. But you can see it kind of gets down towards Portland a bit and then starts to bounce back north as that atmospheric river moves out of the area. Now, also, just one more time, driving home the significant wave heights. We're going to remain elevated as we go through the day today on in towards tomorrow morning. And watch what happens as we look up in the extended forecast. You see some of that stormy activity there. But watch what happens as we build this ridge out over the Gulf of Alaska through the extended forecast. And you can really see the lack of waves there. That would be pretty crazy to see as you go through January. You almost, you know, you're looking at pretty calm seas right off the Pacific Northwest. We'll see if that actually happens. I just got a kick out of that seeing here that this morning. So 15 day precipitation anomaly, even with that atmospheric river pointed <clears throat> at portions of Southwest BC and Western Washington, you can see not much coming after that. And that's a pretty dry signal for much of the West coast of North America. But again, we'll be checking back on that daily. I cross my fingers and keep hoping that something will break or change in this forecast. Now, looking at the artificial intelligence and Salmo mean, we're looking at the North American view of things here. This is last night's run on the left. That's the most recent. This is yesterday afternoon. So we're going to scroll through this and you'll see the ridging start to develop that warm southwest flow back into the Pacific Northwest for some time. And then we scroll off in towards next week. The ridge still right here along the west coast of North America starts to retrograde back out over the Gulf of Alaska. And that is when it really starts to get nasty. That's a very strong high right off our coastline. 
that would definitely not be allowing storms to get back into the region. You could see this would be passing well off to our east. No threat of cold air as we go through about the mid portion of January coming up. And then we continue off into the future. And again, the models are very persistent with this ridging developing across portions of the Gulf of Alaska. The question is, is this going to back up enough or drift off to the west enough to allow some of this to come down and bring some cooler air into the Pacific Northwest as we go through the extended forecast? Still not a great look there. Again, this ridging, it just depends on what it does as we go through the January 20th, 21st, 22nd timeframe. So again, nothing you can discern from this right now. No imminent Arctic blast on its way or anything like that. We're just kind of looking off into the extended to see if there's any potential for it. And right now, pretty hazy. Now, if we look at 850 millibar temperatures, again, one more look at the artificial intelligence. You can see the warm, moist southwest flow much above normal heights across much of western central Canada. And then we continue off through the extended forecast. You notice the Pacific Northwest not spending any time in the below normal category as this ridge is going to be developing across the Gulf of Alaska. And you can see the cold air masses sliding down mainly east of the Rockies. And then this one kind of comes down and tries to push towards BC a little bit here. But again, it's right at the end of the run. There's nothing you can take from that at this point with much above normal conditions across much of the Gulf of Alaska, which the models are very persistent on as we go through the later portion of January. So there's the 8 to 14 day. There's the 8 to 14 day precipitation. Of course, the ridge building, we're going to drop below normal after this atmospheric river rolls through over the next few days. So yeah, we'll continue to check back on this daily. I, I wish this was not the case because I, I don't like to see our snowpack it's going to go through some things here as we go through the mid portion of January. And I'm just hoping maybe the pattern will switch up. I guess it's still possible, but man, over the last few days, the models have been really persistent showing this ridge. But anyway, we'll just kind of continue to check back daily. Hopefully it'll change. Hopefully you guys are having a good day and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.